sustentabilidade da Terra é uma preocupação de todos nós habitantes do planeta. Hoje, no Cidadania, nós aproveitamos a presença de Chang Xinxen, presidente da União Internacional de Conservação da Natureza, para conversar sobre este assunto. É, Bem-vindo aqui ao nosso programa. É, como é, qual é o papel da União da, para a Conservação da Natureza? Good, thank you, Roberta. Speaking about the role of IUCN, since it's the uh, earliest and also largest organization, so it, it, it is role, if I put it in one word, is our mission. That is to say, a just world that value and care nature and the nature resources. The major role, you can see us as a conservation organization for environmental protection, and conserve all the living things in this world. That is to say, we care and conserve our mother nature. But our organization can also be regarded as a development organization. For instance, IUCN is the first organization that put forward the concept and the strategy of sustainable development. We all know that in this country, it's great in 1992, the world held the first conference by name, Environmental and Protection. This is in 1992, after 12 years, when IUCN put forward in its strategic report for conservation to UN, United Nations, for the system development. So after 12 years, it has been accepted by all the government leaders, hold, hence they hold meeting there. Then after 20 years, I also attend that. It's called the Real Plus 20, the United Nations second, after 20 years meeting here, you know, it's paved the way for the most, I think, for human beings' lives decision. That is two years ago, year of 2015, September, in UN General Assembly. The System Development Goal 2030 Agenda has been adopted. It is a historical change. It shows that human being, after the first Industrial Revolution left by the Western countries, UK, etc., right? At that time, we only care about the development, no matter how much cost of the environment, how much damage to our mother nature, but growth, growth, and growth. Until 270 years, now we, re we realize that. If we continue growth, the mother nature will punish us. We cannot sustainable with the climate change, with the loss of biodiversity, with the degradation, of the ecosystem, with the deforestation, with the pollution of the ocean, etc., etc. É, por muitos anos, o modelo era desenvolver primeiro e depois que se pensava na natureza. É, é, é possível mudar? Como como mudar esse modelo? That's a very very good question. Yes, I think. Uh, the modern development, when the human society has been transferred from agricultural civilization, which lasting roughly about three to 6,000 years, and before that is the you know, primitive society, right, with human being, three million years, right? But for agriculture and the nomadic civilization, People still scare about nature, right? Even there are some damage, but they still, you know, scare and respect the nature. But with the Industrial Revol Revolution, which created tremendous commercial civilization, while the wealth, the people's life, greatly improved, right? Then we have aeroplane, we have a bullet train, you know, 
We have modern house and all this modern stuff, right? But at the same time, with the population growth, the environment has also been greatly damaged. But more so, it is that we only have this one Earth. Right? The Earth that is most important function, what we regard as an ecosystem service. What is that? If I use a simple word, it means the air we breathe, the food we eat, the material that nature gives us for construction material, for the fuel of the energy material, and also for the medicine material, right? And the water we drink, they all rely on the ecosystem service, not only for human beings, but for all the other species. But that has already gone into the tipping point. What does that mean? If we go over, it is really big risk for us. So that is why we are so much important to see that we can no longer just conquer the nature by achieving development. All our development rely on the nature. Without nature, we cannot develop, right? And also we think that to conserve nature actually is not conserve, you know, all the species is actually the conserve nature is also make our development sustainable. So this bitter lesson, I think that, uh, you know, the industrial Western countries already have their lesson, right? Take my home country, for instance, China, right? For modernization, in the past 35 years, when China started reform and opening up, we have already uh, irrigated 500 million of the poverty people. So for modernization, China had done great. But for protection and the development, unfortunately, we follow into many countries' old road, right, old model. So that is why we decided, together with all the governments, we must shift that. We cannot continue doing that, first development, then protect. First approved, then clean, right? Thank you. É, o, o senhor mencionou o, o modelo, o, o caso da China. É, lá, você sabe que está cada vez mais a, 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 se investindo. A, a China parece que é onde mais se cria... É, é, modelos de desenvolvimento de energia eólica e, e solar. É, esse é um, é um caminho que pode ser trilhado pelo resto do mundo também? Ok. I think that this is a now general trend. For instance, your country also pioneer in one of the very few for biomass energy, right? From a sugar cane, right? It's a, it's a biological energy, right? And China is also now in the country invest the largest for solar energy and wind energy. And I think this is the only way because we can no longer just use the fossil energy. I do not mean that fossil energy cannot use unless you make it clean, right? But meanwhile, there are so many sources for that, right? So energy is so much... Uh, as uh, most uh, decisive, you know, uh, factors to see that whether we can reduce emission of the CO2, right, and the greenhouse gas. Uh, so I think that it should be a model. But uh, speaking about the model, uh, we have to understand that each country has its own context, right? Each country also has its different economic and social development phase, right? So they're facing, you know, different challenge, meanwhile, different opportunity. So solar is going towards that direction, but proceeding from their own reality. It can move step by step. Thank you.
É, nós vemos por imagens da China que também a, a poluição é uma preocupação né, nos, né, nas cidades chinesas. Qual seria uma, uma forma de, de tentar resolver esse problema? Yes, and uh, like many industrialized countries, when I was a students, uh, we all know that London, you know, uh, we read Charles Dickens novel, right? It's in the capital of the smoke, right? We see that Germany and the Belgium, we also see those cities in the United States, right? So unfortunately, China in the past 35 years has achieved very fast growth. And now China is the number two economy in the world. And also China's infrastructure, for instance, uh, highway, and express train, power station, harbor, you know, uh, all these things are almost in the forefront of the world, right? But meanwhile, in, I just mentioned that in that regard, we also have a lesson, right? And China is a country with 1.3 billion of the population, one-fifth of the world population, right? So how to solve that problem? So China actually, you know, uh, has uh, given much attention to environment. For instance, China was also the country participate in 1992, uh, Rio de Janeiro's first uh, environmental and development conference in the world, right? And immediately after that, China established the International Council for Environment and Development. So uh, uh, inviting, you know, uh, globally, experts, scholars, and experienced uh, ministers. And one, two of them are from Brazil, I still remember. So I'm also the member for that. So China constantly learning, you know, by opening up, listening to their advice, uh, how to handle well these relations. But one thing, I think that when you achieve something big, that is nothing gain with our cost, right? So uh, speaking about environment, we also have uh, quite some uh, big challenge. Nevertheless, China now are very serious. Since uh, year of 2012, China's number 18 ruling party's Congress, then the People's Congress have decided to make a strategic program, what we call eco-civilization. What is the eco-ecological civilization? I will use a simple word. It's a, a Sustainable Development Goal 2030 Agenda China version, right? So basically, it takes comprehensive way to solve this problem, right? From the energy, from the water, you know, from the soil, and also, you know, uh, from the production model and the consumption model, okay. And uh, through various ways, even education, right. So now I can see that the situation start already improve, right. And China also, as you know, have a Belt Road Initiative and a program means along the old Silk Road, you know, ocean routes and the continental routes, which also link into this Latin America, right? For this kind of project, China helped in those countries for in infrastructure, but now put the environmental protection and also ecological conservation in a very high agenda. So uh, now not only government, but also people, you know, start to, you know, also give a much care. And uh, people's uh, requirements are also very strong. And one thing you probably see some uh, publication about Beijing, right? For instance, Beijing also start a huge program you know, for the environmental protection. Quite some uh, capital, you know, uh, function. It's not that much capital uh, has moving to the nearby, you know, Hebei province. Uh, Xiong'an is a new uh, region, 
right? The President Xi Jinping, you know, personally uh, guiding this uh, new area. So quite some, uh, you know, uh, like you have a Brasilia as a new capital, right? While Beijing in the future will mainly maintain as a political, cultural, international capital function, while manufacture and also those some um, economic role will move into a nearby area. Yes. Mm -hmm. é, alguns pesquisadores é, ambientalistas é, consideram que a, a raça humana é, é praticamente uma, uma praga para o planeta, que está consumindo os recursos e, e não está deixando muito para o futuro. É, como como tratar esse assunto? I think that uh, you raise uh, something uh, very uh, sharp and critical. And I will uh, quote what uh, Muhammad Gandhi, founding father of India, modern India, says that. Nature provides sufficient enough for all the human beings, but not for greedy. When we see the financial crisis 2008, right, what is the real reason for that crisis? Well, we will not, uh, you know, difficult to discover, right? The last 10 years of the last century when globalization has been depicting as a rosy picture, right? Everything is good. But not so long when we celebrate millennium in the year of uh, 2000, Nasdaq go bankruptcy, right? And what triggered that is the Enron incident. But since then, Anran Institute, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, corruptive cases constantly happened. So what triggers for the financial crisis is the Lehman Brothers cases, right? So it, I think it touches something fundamental. Not all human beings are so greedy, right? Not th that. We human beings know that without nature will be not possible to have us, but nature can survive alone without human beings, right? How we become human beings? Because we're constantly learning from our mother nature. So that is why we should conserve and protect nature. Then some people may say, well, it's a market economy. Right. The market economy has an invisible hand. It has uh, such a great role and function to play. Yes, but even in Harvard University, which I, you know, my foreign, uh, my Chinese university graduate, later I also study in Harvard, right? Even Harvard University also teaching market economy, he said market and the market failure. There are six areas market cannot go. If you still stick to one side, market economy, you're bound to failure, right? So, uh, which also reminds me of the founding father of the modern, you know, capitalism, Adam Smith. He said, while this market can perform, there are two predictions. First, Precondition are the full institutionalized society. And the second, he said, is a full ethical society. Without these two preconditions, the invisible hand, the market the capitalism will bound to create disaster. Right? So I think that is always balance, right? It's always balance. So that is why I will not blame the people, right? People always dream for better life, right? But, but I think that it is that what really leading, the value system really leading. If we recall the modern university, we can recall that modern university 
start from Polonia University 1,000 years ago in Italy, Pankova, 800s, in uh, also Italy, then Paris and Oxford, right? Then in this country also, right? All those universities start by the religion at that time. What are the most important courses they are learn and educate? It is a course of the ethics and the moral courses. But now you see so many universities, they only, you know, leading students to learn that, right? Just, uh, you know, market MBA, you know, and the law and all those, whatever can make a quick money, right? So it's the ethics, the value driven has a big problem. Some of the media is also, you know, uh, not play a very, very favorable role in, ta in telling people the truth, right? So I think that, uh, 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 speaking about that, I'm still very confident because most people will know that while we have a development, we cannot damage our environment. We also need to care our children and the children generation after generation. Thank you. Muito obrigada pela sua participação, Mr. Chang Xingsheng. Thank you very much for coming here to Cidadania. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Essa entrevista está disponível na internet no endereço senado.leg.br/tv. É só clicar em programas e depois em Cidadania. E o que você achou desse programa? Nós queremos conhecer a sua opinião e também saber qual assunto você gostaria que a gente discutisse. Ligue 0800 61 22 11 ou mande um WhatsApp para 61 999 661616 e faça sua sugestão para o Cidadania da TV Senado. Obrigada pela companhia e até a próxima!